afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jin Tugao, and I'm a grade 11 student at Ashford College. And today, through this talk, I'd like to talk about how this new world of automation is going to happen in the near future, and how to get there. Our world is increasingly becoming more automated. We have seen the rise of driverless cars, of Roomba robots to do our cleaning, as well as smart cooking machines to do our cooking. But it seems that we have this fear, this apprehension towards AIs and robots, especially by the fact they're becoming more and more proficient at their job and they're becoming so good at their job that they can replace humans at our jobs. And what I want to get to you through this talk today is that we need to change this negative attitude, this negative mindset that we have on AIs in order to have this more welcoming one in order to acknowledge that automation will occur in, in the near future. Because if we don't, we just won't be able to see the benefits that this changing world will bring to us. So first, let's tackle, why do we fear robots? There's a 2013 study from the University of Oxford saying that in the next 20 years, 47% of the jobs in the United States are under threat of automation. That is 73 million jobs. And this automation will affect us no matter our background and regardless of the education that we received. Fast Week Robotics is an Australian company who designed a robot, the Adrian 109, capable of laying 1,000 center bricks of construction per hour. Two human bricklayers doing the same job would have taken a majority of the day in order to do so. And on November 13, 2018, Perth Now, the Sunday Times, has reported that this robot constructed a house with three bedrooms and two bathrooms included in just three days. On September 2017, the South China Morning Post reported that a Chinese robot dentist was able to perform its first dental implant without any human intervention. So, under these circumstances, why should we change our mindset? Like, why should we adopt this walking attitude? Because this is very counterintuitive. Well, if we keep our negative mindset, we will overwork and overextend ourselves. Basically, we will be killing ourselves our job in order to prove to employers that we are worthy to be kept in the company. Having said that, when a business decides to lay off its employees, it's going to do it no matter what. Because at the end of the day, a robot is just cheaper and more efficient than a human. But what I, in other words, what I'm trying to get to you over here is instead of spending energy into preserving our position, to conserving what we have right now, we should spend this energy into preparing ourselves in order to accommodate it for the changes of this changing world. But what does this new world look like, you may ask? Well, as time travel has not been invented yet, I can only tell you, tell you assumptions. But what we can do is go back in history and lend into a certain period of time called the Industrial Revolution. And it's very striking the similarities between our ancestors' experience during that period of time and ours with this turning point in history, which is going to occur in the new future. During the Industrial Revolution, an average worker saw their Work weeks diminished from 60 hours per week to only 40 hours per week. But they also saw their wages increased. Interest has been introduced and available to them, as well as laws that were drafted that protected them. This led to an increase of happiness as more money was made by less people. But for us, what does this mean? With robots and artificial intelligence performing such a high level in technology, the benefits are going to be huge. We might even start enjoying shorter work weeks. Like, just picture this. Imagine a 20-hour work week with, all, with the same pay. Wouldn't this be nice? As well as, um, as, well as um, with robots taking care of time zone consuming as well as labor-intensive tasks, that means we have more free time. That means more time for us, our family, our community. This could even lead to a healthy lifestyle, as with more free time, we can do exercise, do our own cooking, instead of going to a fast food restaurant for convenience. Spend time with your family, do volunteer, enjoy your hobbies, and this list goes on. In addition, we might start to enjoy high quality products for a cheaper price. Because with automation, that takes out the major expenses in business, which is an employee's salary. Nevertheless, there's this transition period between our current world and this future world. And we want this transition period to be as smooth as possible in order to avoid the social disruption that this would cause. Out of the 73 million jobs, that are, uh, American million jobs, that are at stake, at least thousands of Americans will find themselves jobless. But even 
though when a profession becomes obsolete, we have new professions that emerge to replace them, like, for example, be, being a YouTuber. Sometimes this might not be enough. In my opinion, I think this responsibility to ensure the smooth transition lies into the hands of corporations and governments. They can do so by making programs to retrain jobless workers into areas which require manpower. And they can also limit the rise of unemployment by providing opportunities. And let's illustrate it with this following example. So we have factory workers who are losing their jobs because they're being replaced by robots. And what should be done in this situation is a program that retrains those jobless factory workers into mechanical engineers. However, on the individual level, we also need to work onto ourselves. Because in the future, perhaps we won't have the concept of full-time job will not be existing anymore. Perhaps we'll be making several part-time jobs instead. And that means that we need to start building a set of skills from different areas of expertise instead of only one. However, if in the future, robots surpass humans in most fields, what jobs will be left for us to do? Well, according to Toby Walsh, a professor in artificial intelligence in the, at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, he says, the new jobs we'll have to be doing where either human excels or where we choose not to have machines. This means, the only jobs left would be those who would prefer humans to do them. In other words, on top of academic education, we also need to start mastering skills where we human excel at. And that means interpersonal relationship, intuition, emotion, problem solving, insp uh, inspiration, ideas, creativity. And this list goes on. And by becoming a more pluripotent worker, we'll be able to face and to adapt to the challenges that this changing world will bring to us. However, we're not the only one who need to work on to ourselves. In order to fully prepare for this change of will, I have some questions to ask. If a driverless car injures a pedestrian, who do we blame? If a robot commits a crime, who or what is held responsible? And with automation, we have people who are working less, so making less money. So tax income and tax revenue for the government will decrease. So would the government, in response to this, file a new law that taxes automated units instead of citizens. So in order to fully ad adapt for this changing world, our justice system needs to see their laws either be implemented or improved. So for a smooth transition, we need to ensure cooperation between all aspects of our society. But this cooperation will be ever, ever more important in the future in order to ensure the coexistence between humans and machines. To conclude, why should we fear robots? They are also made by humans. We should spend this energy into preparing ourselves, into building ourselves into a more pluripotent workers in order to adapt for the very shaky world that might be in a new world. But finally, we also need to remember this. This world that is changing, it's heading for a better future. And in this newly automated world, the benefits will outreach drawbacks. Thank you very much.